Hello, I'm John Cunningham, and welcome to another episode of the Red Chip Money Report. For those of you new to the show, Red Chip is an investor relations, media, and research firm focused on emerging growth companies. Our unique platform combines global multimedia with traditional investor relations, reaching investors around the world. First up is Unicisive Therapeutics, stock symbol UNCY on the NASDAQ. Unicisive is at the forefront of addressing significant unmet patient needs in kidney disease. With no approved treatments for acute kidney injury and limited options for those with chronic disease, Unicisive is building a pipeline that aims to fill this treatment gap and ultimately improve patient outcomes. After reporting positive results for a pivotal phase three trial, Unicisive is now preparing to file its new drug application with the FDA. We'll learn more when we speak with the founder and CEO later in the show. Up next is Alarum Technologies, stock symbol ALAR on the NASDAQ. Alarum Technologies is a global provider of cybersecurity and private solutions for both enterprise customers and consumers. Later in the show, you'll learn how they are executing their plans for rapid growth in this multi-billion dollar global market when we speak with the company's CEO. Now before we get to our first interview, our quote of the week, it comes from the book, Small Stocks, Big Money. If you want to invest in the microcap space, buy companies, not stocks. If you buy stocks, the daily fluctuations and lack of liquidity will drive you crazy. These quotes come from Byron Roth, CEO of Roth Capital, featured in Chapter 7 of Small Stocks, Big Money. This is a book of exclusive interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Get a digital copy on Amazon today for just $18. Now let's get started with our first interview today with Unicisive Therapeutics. Shalab, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Craig, for having me. Shalab, for viewers new to the story, would you introduce Unicisive, please? Absolutely. We are a clinical stage biotechnology company based out of uh, Silicon Valley, California. We have two drugs in development. Our lead drug is a drug that helps patients, uh, that has the potential to help patients who have high phosphate. High phosphate uh, happens to patients who have chronic kidney disease, more specifically, in chronic kidney disease stage five, which is also called as end stage renal disease, ESRD, or also simply known as patients who are on dialysis. So lead drug is Renosor, which is expected to file for NDA approval this year, and it's for treatment of high phosphate. We have a second drug that is in clinical development. Currently it's undergoing phase one clinical trial in the United Kingdom, and it is being evaluated for both acute as well as chronic kidney disease. Our entire company is focused on chronic kidney disease or kidney disease in general. The first drug focuses on chronic part. The second drug can work both in acute and chronic kidney disease. And last but not the least, Greg, just to give you a context, roughly 14% of the U.S. population suffers from chronic kidney disease. It's a pretty big market opportunity, but more importantly, it affects a lot of people who don't even know that they have chronic kidney disease. Could you be more specific about the size of that market opportunity, Shalab, both for the chronic and the acute problems? Let's talk about chronic kidney disease first, because that's a drug, uh, our lead drug addresses that, and uh, specifically in chronic kidney disease hyperphosphatemia market. So phosphate level is something that most of us don't really worry about it. If a kidney function is normal, phosphate is not a problem to be excreted or to be taken out from the body. But when the kidneys, which are filtering part of the body, do not work properly, they end up in having phosphate not being excreted. And it is not the phosphate that is an issue, Craig, we are trying to solve for. Phosphate combines with calcium and ends up causing people to die from heart attack because calcium and phosphate combination or product ends up in causing atherosclerosis, which is simple term for coronary artery disease, just the same way as a patient would experience thickening of arteries that you would see by having someone either having very high cholesterol or having a very uh, a bad diet, as in eating a steak, for example, uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I give you that example just to make the point. The phosphate becomes an issue in patients with chronic kidney disease, and phosphate also causes bone problem. So going back to the market opportunity, hyperphosphatemia market in the global market is roughly $2.5 billion. 
1.25 billion dollar in the US and 1.25 billion dollar in rest parts of the world. The US market, 1.25 billion dollar. There are other drugs on the market, and we can talk more specifically about what does our drug do, how does it address that myth medical need. Shalab, Unicisif has just completed a bioequivalence trial for Renazorb. Tell us about the results of that trial and what are the next steps in commercialization? Yes, Craig. So as you recall, this was the only clinical study that we needed to run in order to be able to file our NDA. The clinical results, uh, the clinical trial results showed that our drug is similar to the comparator drug, which is uh, another uh, drug based out of lanthanum called Fosterinol. And in order for us to have met the bioequivalence study, uh, we had to show that when our drug is given to healthy volunteers and uh, we evaluate uh, urinary phosphate level, it is similar to that what you would expect from Fosterinol, which is the comparator drug, and we achieved those uh, results. Um, in the back of those results, with a, a successful completion of BE study, we completed our financing, as you also are aware of it. And this allows us to be able to file our NDA in the next couple of weeks to a couple of months. So, we've been talking a lot about Renazorb so far. I want to turn quickly to your other drug in the pipeline, Uni494. Absolutely. Uni494 is a drug which is a, a works on mitochondria. Think about mitochondria as a part of the cell that an energy storage system or energy storage capacitor. So just like in your house, if you don't have electricity, none of your devices, uh, iPhone or internet or television will work. Similarly, if the cells do not have mitochondria or not working proper mitochondria, uh, they will have dysfunction. Uni494 addresses, stabilizes mitochondria. It addresses acute kidney injury and also chronic kidney disease. The differentiation between acute and chronic is somewhat artificial, if you will, because if we have a patient or a person who has kidney dysfunction for first 90 days, we call it acute kidney injury, but if it continues on for a much longer period of time, we call it chronic kidney disease. The second drug, Uni494, just started a clinical development program in the UK. We are running a phase one healthy volunteer study, and this way we can evaluate and see how the drug performs. We have a human biological data in terms of the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic, more talking more in general terms. What it means, we are trying to see how the drug goes into the body and dissipates. There's a lot of uh, clinical data from the drug as it relates to uh, the Uni494 is a pro-drug, but what it originally released is a drug called Nicorandal. So there's a lot of data on Nicorandal already available. We are super excited for this drug. It's taken a bit of time to get into clinic, but we start to see the clinical trial data in the next uh, few days, and we expect to have phase one completed by end of this year. Shalab, you mentioned already some of the key players on your team, such as Doug Dramasic. Give us uh, an introduction of yourself as well as the other people that make Unisys of the great company that it is. Uh, thanks, Rex. So by way of background, I'm a physician, uh, trained practice in New York uh, with a decade of clinical training experience. I went to work on Wall Street as a sales side analyst covering biotech companies like ours and also covered uh, pharma companies like uh, Pfizer, Merck, uh, Shering Plow and Lilly. I then went to work for Genetic and Corporate Strategy Group and then moved on to form companies before starting Unicycle. My experience and background has been that a product in itself is not enough. You need three things for this to work. You need the support of investors who are committed to see the products and companies succeed. Uh, we have that. And number two, you need a commitment uh, from the team that is single-minded and focused on execution. We have that. And number three, you have to have a great product. If you don't have a great product, then you struggle with uh, having great team and investor, but you then have to go and find new products. Uh, the third part, which I mentioned to you, Renaissance was always a great product, but having spent last two, two plus years as a public company, we have now got to the point where we can file the drug for FDA approval. All right, Shalab, we've covered a lot of ground here. To wrap up, put it in a nutshell for us. Why should an investor take an interest in Unicisive right now? Craig, there are probably three, three reasons or three uh, summary points that I would like to emphasize. Number one, we have a very late stage drug. In drug development, people have drugs that are going through phase one trial, phase two trial. We have a very late stage drug which has no clinical risk at the moment. We are in the process of regulatory filing. 
Uh, the clinical trials were completed at the end of last year, as I mentioned earlier. So number one, there is a drug which is in very, very late stage in clinical development. We are about to file the process with FDA, NDA filing. The NDA filing takes us for approval, potential approval next year. So that's number one. Number two, in the current economy, or for that matter, any economy, for a small company, the challenge is that the investors feel that the company did very well in terms of clinical program, but then there is a challenge about capital markets. We have no financing risk or limited financing risk because we have already commitment for another $100 million. As we achieve milestones, that money comes in, and that's number two part. Number three part, most companies are single product companies, single product focus company, and the entire value of the company is, relies on one drug. And that perhaps is true in some way because even though we have the second drug, that has not seen much of air time. Our entire focus uh, from an investor's point, have, point of view has been the first drug. But I'll just reiterate, the second drug is now in clinic. We are focused on de developing our second drug. And the second drug is pretty exciting because it addresses a problem that currently there is no approved treatment and that problem or that indication is acute kidney injury. Um, we'd love to talk more about it. And by the time Renazor goes for FDA approval, the second drug starts to go into the end of phase one and next year it will be in phase two trials. So those are the three points that I would like to summarize. Um, great product in a very big market opportunity with very limited risk uh, uh, for approval. Well financed company. And number three, a company that has got two exciting products, not just one. Shalab, that is very exciting. Unisisive is a well-financed company aspiring to reduce the pill burden. Thank you for sharing your story with us today. My pleasure, Greg. My pleasure. Now to get more information on Unisisive Therapeutics, visit uncyinfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free. You can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-REDSHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redchip.com featuring emerging growth companies like Unisisive Therapeutics. In addition to our newsletter, you can also order your copy of Small Stocks, Big Money. This is a book written by Redship CEO featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Order your copy at Amazon.com today for just $18. Now let's move on to our next interview today with Alarum Technologies. Shakar, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Now, Shakar, I know you have some very important news to announce, and in just a moment, we're going to turn to your exciting updates. First, though, for viewers brand new to the story, Give us the basics on Alarum Technologies. So Alarum is an Israeli-based, innovative and disruptive company developing, selling and providing cybersecurity and privacy solutions for organizations and for consumers. Meaning we have privacy solutions in our B2B, which is business to business side of our organizations and privacy and cybersecurity solutions for consumers, which is our B2C part of our business. Now, Shakar, for Alarum, that first quarter of 2023 was yet another attention-grabbing quarter as the company continues on what you call its journey to profitability. Please give us some of the highlights. Okay, thanks. So first of all, I want uh, to adjust your question. For us, it's a real celebration this quarter. And why? First of all, we continue our growth. It's not just that we are growing quarter, comparing to the parallel quarter in the last year, which is also great, but we are growing 10, nine and 10 consecutive quarters. On the other side is that we started our journey to profitability, but in this quarter, it's the first time ever, it's in history for us, that our balance sheet and PLL is even in a small plus, meaning our adjusted EBITDA comparing to $1.7 million loss last quarter, which was also a significant improvement from the beginning of last year. At this quarter, we achieved a great growth in revenues, and I must be honest, much earlier than expected, we achieved our break-even point. For us, it's a huge celebration. It's really history for this company. It doesn't say that, and, and I want to be very clear with our investors and, and, and the viewers, 
It doesn't say that we are going to be profitable from now and forever, but just to remind everybody, last year we lost $8.6 million, and this year it's going to be a huge improvement. This quarter was an amazing quarter. I can tell you that also this quarter is going very good, the current quarter. I cannot expose more than this. You will see it soon. But for us, it's a huge milestone that we know how to achieve the profitability. And now it's a decision in our hands. Again, as I explained many times in the past, profitability is always will be versus growth. We are trying to achieve the optimum point, meaning to grow and to uh, improve our loss or profitability. Of course, that we can take it more to the growth and then we will lose more or the opposite. But basically, it's in our hands. The machine is working. We know how to create revenues. We know how to create profitable revenues. And for us, it's really an amazing quarter. Shakar, that's very compelling what you're saying. We know how to create revenue. Very powerful. Also, I like the fact that you're, it's a celebration. Very, very powerful stuff you're offering. Now you've got nine straight quarters of revenue growth and a very low burn rate, of course. You're boasting an unusually strong financial position for a microcap company. Tell us more facts about Alarm's financial position that investors may be overlooking or that you find particularly compelling? Okay, so, so, so again, it's a, it's a summarization of, your pre of my previous answer. We achieved to the refle inflection point that our, uh, as, as we mentioned all the time, that we have a very scalable business model. So we have the infrastructure, we improved our product. Basically, most of the achievements this quarter, which is basically, you know, we are growing nine quarters, consecutive quarters, but it's the first time that we are in a break-even point. And this is due to the reason that our most of our growth is coming from, we call it as a professional term, from an inbound customers, meaning, especially in our B2B side, in the net-nut business, we are a strong brand, one of the strongest brands in this world. And customers knows, and we have a great brand awareness. So customers approaching us, so the customer acquisition cost is lower. And this is how you can get, you can get a kind of an organic growth instead of customer acquisition. And this is the major reason why we grew and we still uh, improved significantly the bottom line of our P&L and achieved the break-even point. In addition, something else is happening in these days due to the, the AI and the data. AI is based on data. Everybody needs data. So we see, we, 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 we see in the field, we see that the demand for data solutions, for our proxy solutions, for data collection solutions, for automation is increased significantly in the last quarter. So the AI, the chat GPT that everybody's talking about, it comes suddenly into our life and makes our lives to be totally different in the future. For us, for the data business, at this point of time, is look like a positive, uh, as a positive uh, trend and uh, another uh, engine, a uh, growth engine. Shakar, you have made it abundantly clear that Alarum, in a financial sense, is unusually strong for a microcap company. Investors, however, may say, well, Alarum is a very small company in a land of giant companies, or they may say, internet access solutions companies are very common. What would you say to those concerns? Thanks. So let's start on the internet or internet access is very common, but internet access is, is a title. Under this title, there are many subdomains and, and, and sub-verticals and sub-industries that are industries by themselves. Our industry, the data collection, especially the IP proxy for data collection, is not crowded at all. And even if it is, it's just starting now, and I can tell you, and I can commit, that NetNut, our brand here, is one of the top, between three to five, we can argue if it's number three or number five in the world, well-known brands in the world. That's because we started this space three years ago, we made some great decisions, and today everyone that is dealing with data know who is NetNut, you can go and see 
in all of the ranking websites and, and other websites that are a, a, a kind of analyst reports about this space, etc. So NetNut is a huge brand in this space. We are growing, you can see the numbers. The numbers are talking on behalf of themselves. And a very important topic, every company started as a young company 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even the top five of the world. We are starting a new journey now. Comparing to the three years ago, we started two and a half years ago, a new journey. And you can see that we choose the right journey, the right direction. The numbers are here. You will not find a lot of, or even if, I don't know, I don't want the, uh, uh, to say it, but you will not find many micro cap companies that are growing and become profitable in the same time or started a journey to profitability or, you know, almost in the break even point. That shows that we are doing something good. That shows that we are in the right direction to go, to go out of this micro cap world and to jump to the next class. And investors that believe in our story, believe in our space, know to appreciate the number and to evaluate the numbers of the company, I think this concerns of the fact that internet access is very maybe common or crowded, as you described it. Shakar, U.S.-based investors especially tend to be interested in companies that have substantial operations in the United States. How important is the United States market to Alarum? In our B2C, you know, it's different. We have consumers all over the world. But in the B2B uh, stage, by the way, it's, it's changing from a quarter to a quarter, but basically a major portion of our customers are coming from North America and the US. US is our major market, uh, not because of the stock exchange, by the way, because it's the most exciting and biggest market in the world. Everybody wants to be in the US and also us. So we have exciting uh, customers in the US. We are investing marketing and sales efforts in the US. And the major portion of our current customers are from the U.S. Let's wrap up now with the essential value proposition. Shikar, why should investors take an interest in Alarum Technologies right now? So, we are growing nine consecutive quarters in a row. We are, we are not buying our revenues. We are, the opposite is the correct. The bottom line is become better and better in our p &L. And look, this is an historical quarter for us. We don't need so much money, even at all, in order to keep our growth and our innovation. That's, that's the tremendous change that we did in the last year. So I don't know uh, if many micro cap companies can, can demonstrate or can present the world these two years of growth and profitability. So investors that interesting in tech companies, in data companies, in privacy companies, that is still not in the place that it should be, and they want to enjoy and bear fruits from this journey, also from their side. So for them, I think it's a, an amazing opportunity. Oh, of course, to be honest, it's also a risk, but all the capital market is risk. And I know, I think that investors in our space are smart enough to make the calculation of the risk versus the chance or the probability or the opportunity. And by these calculations, I think that Alarum is a great opportunity. That's what I can say. We certainly agree, Shakar. It is a fabulous story. And thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure again. Now to get more information on Alarum Technologies, visit alarinfo.com. You'll see research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free. You can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news. You can also call 1-800-REDCHIP to speak to a specialist if you have any questions. We also have a free weekly newsletter you can subscribe to at redchip.com featuring emerging growth companies like Alarum Technologies. In addition to our newsletter, you can also order your copy of Small Stocks, Big Money. This is a book written by Redship CEO, featuring interviews with some of the biggest players in the microcap space. Order your copy at Amazon.com today for just $18. Now let's recap the companies you met today. First, you met Unicisive Therapeutics, stock symbol UNCY on the NASDAQ. Unicisive Therapeutics is at the forefront of addressing significant unmet patient needs 
in kidney disease. With multiple near-term catalysts, Unisysive represents a compelling opportunity in the kidney disease space with a valuation that still reflects a significant discount to its peers. Learn more at uncyinfo.com. Then you met Alarum Technologies, stock symbol ALAR on the NASDAQ. Alarum's innovative products, nine consecutive quarters of revenue growth, and aggressive expansion plans in the attractive and rapidly growing privacy and security markets provide a compelling opportunity for early investors. Growth accelerated in 2022 with the company generating $18.8 million in revenue for the year. That's up 83% over the year 2021. Their highly scalable business model boasts gross margins of greater than 50%. Three analysts cover Alarum with a median price target of $7.75 per share, providing significant upside potential for current investors. Again, to learn more about Alarum, visit alarinfo.com. Again, if you have any questions about any of the companies featured on today's show, call us at 1-800-RED-CHIP or email us at info at redchip.com. In closing, remember, while small caps can provide significant gains, you must be prepared for the downside. Small cap stocks are among the most volatile asset class. Some of the companies featured on this show are Redship client companies, and we may own stock in these companies. So please always read our disclosures at redship.com. <music>